2020, unfortunately, is one of those anomalies in the history, in the annals of time that will never fully know what really went on. Whether you're, t whether it's the people who think that the election was stolen because of all the mail-in ballots, whether it's people who thought that the that because Bernie decided that he people's health was more important during the primary and everyone rallied behind Joe and told people to go out there and vote, even though it was apparently killing people. The point is this. Up until now, we're living in almost like a simulation where we still want to believe that something's real, but it's not real. And the fact that they were so brazen in two ways, it wasn't just one, it was two ways. Number one, it was obvious, probably since, look, Joe Biden's been in cognitive decline for probably seven or eight years, if we're being reasonable. But he has been in complete decline for probably the last four to five years. If there was a normal election in 2020, Trump wins in a landslide. It, he was predicted at 80 percent before the before the pandemic. And happened. again, Joe barely won. So you fast forward to now. And you decide to not only run him again, knowing full well that he's not there in any mental capacity to run this nation, even though there were plenty of options. Uh, granted, most of them suck, but the options were there. We all know Gavin Newsom wants to be president. We all know Gretchen Whitmer wants to be president. We all know J.P. Pritzker wants to be president. And we sure as hell know Josh Shapiro and Pete Buttigieg want to be president. Oh, my God. Good luck to you, Josh. And you better believe that they would run in 28. If for some reason Kamala Harris isn't able to win. And why would that be? Because not only did they not conduct an actual primary with Joe Biden when it was obvious that that's what they should have done, but then they just decided we're not only going to remove Joe, we're going to stick Kamala in there and we're not even going to have a fight at the convention. We're not even going to do anything to show some sort of a democratic process. No, they don't care. We're going right in with it. And so why do I believe? that there is an ax to grind, not just with Josh Shapiro, possibly with Gretchen Whitmer. You never know how they're feeling behind the scenes because the significance of two of the governors that I just mentioned are in states that the Democrats cannot lose. They cannot lose Pennsylvania and they cannot lose Michigan. And they're going to. And they may very well. I think so they will. So here's my point. Even though Please. it's very tongue in cheek, you think Joe Biden likes the fact that he was kicked out? In the I don't think he's I honestly don't think that he's even really aware. Um, Met, Metal, we have commented many times on that Bernie just ate their crap and just went and licked their boots. We've said that many times on this show. I would definitely agree with Sarah Newsom. Well, Newsom is the American psycho, baby. Like he's he's Patrick Bateman. He's just waiting for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. He would be the most cold blooded president we've ever had. Like he, I mean, he really, like he's out of a Marvel comic. Like that's, you thought Mike uh, Pence was dangerous. He'd be just as Well, the goal people needs to be the implosion of the Democratic Party. Sorry, Gavin. Before they get to that point. And if they keep bleeding like they are now, they won't be able to win another election after this. They won't. They won't have there's the numbers. A reason, there's a reason why he was called the Amendment King. Remember, Bernie is the reason why the Women's uh, the Protect Women's Act was put into the crime bill. It was Bernie who made sure that that happened. It was probably one of the only good things that came out of that. But today, today, well, actually, no, this is yesterday. Still wasn't worth signing it. So yesterday, 9-11, we know we always have to be reminded of the worst terrorist act in our nation's history. It's Sorry, it's not January 6th. So they all descended upon Shanksville, Pennsylvania, which obviously is a very rural community. It's a very Trump community. But President Biden was there and he had an interaction with a Trump supporter. And here's how it went down. There you go, man. Got, I, need, I need that hat. You want my autograph? Hell no. <laughs> you got my name. Come on. Come on. I ain't going that far. Yeah. <laughs> you can barely like form sentences. This is ridiculous. He's like, such a grandpa. He's ridiculous. This is the, this is this is the president. But this is the image that is captured. He knows that he was holding a Trump hat. He doesn't care. And he puts it on his head. And you know why I think he put it on his head? Because he really doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't anymore. care. And well, I think he's in La La Land too. I honestly, I don't think he's cared for a long time. And they, they'll, and now they, you could see they'll like lax up on his meds because he doesn't have to be as focused now, and shit now. Now, I would say from for, for Sable, no, I don't think he went MAGA. But what I think he no. is doing is he's putting out a smoke signal to basically say, I don't care if Trump wins. <laughs> 
Why would I care? You decided that you didn't want me anymore. You know, the truth is this process could have easily been done a, a year and a half ago. And it's been admitted time and again that they knew that he was in massive cognitive decline. He was not running the country. I've been saying, how long have I been saying President Blinken on this? Well, it, yeah, but here's the other thing. They knew that it had to be him that ran. And they knew that if they had a real primary, that Kamala wouldn't be able to win. And they knew that this was the only way for her to win is for him to stick in there this long. So we have no time to have a primary and then put her in. That's the only way this was ever going to work. But think about it this way. She couldn't get elected. What? In essence, it, it, it says to me that the cracks in the armor are just too obvious now. And maybe the reason they feel that they have to go in this direction is because they know that they can't legitimately get away with it anymore. <laughs> that they know that there is a yearning for a real change within the system. Now, unfortunately, down here in the congressional district that Jen ran in, there were multiple misfires. But let's be honest. The reflection of what this congressional district is, is the ideal representation of what the current status of the Democratic Party actually is. Wealthy, suburban enclaves surrounded by Miami and Fort Lauderdale. It's very privileged. It's very privileged. And it's and it's in not many ways. It's so it's it's very reminiscent of the district in that, terms Jamal, of who votes. that Jamal Bowman got knocked out of. Right. In terms of who votes. OK, there are definitely some not privileged people in this district. 100 that, that percent. It was but, a yeah. dismal turnout. And we know based on a lot of crunch numbers from a very skilled individual who helped us on this campaign, that not only is it the western part of this congressional district that votes in mass, but it's also a part of the congressional district that lives behind gated walls. And that is a big problem when you're trying to bring the democratic process to people who desperately need it. What do the people behind the gated walls care? They don't. They don't care. They don't. What's important to them? <laughs> well, and this is also the people that I think, in, in, to me, are the same people that do not understand the difference between feeling unsafe and feeling uncomfortable.